This video is sponsored by Boris FX. Boris FX offers some of the leading software tools for motion graphics and visual effects used in the film and television industry today. From the Academy Award winning planar tracker Mocha to the popular Boris Continuum Complete and Sapphire Effects collections, go and check out all of the awesome stuff they have on their website at borisfx.com. And if you do decide to get in on the fun, you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to knock 15% off the final price. Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting video. Today I want to talk about optics. No, not, not those optics. Here, let me fix that for you. There, that better? Today, I want to introduce you to a brand new plugin from Boris FX called Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 plugins with thousands of customizable presets that you can use directly within Photoshop, in Lightroom, or via the standalone application that is available for Windows or for Mac to add anything from color correction and color grading to invisible image cleanups, stylized looks, realistic looking lens flare, and all sorts of other cool effects to your photos in a non-destructive way. Optics allows you to layer different effects on top of each other, fully customize their parameters and then use smart masks and selection tools to control exactly where and how these effects are going to be applied. Boris FX Optics is available on a subscription model for 9 US dollars for a month or 99 US dollars for a full year. And if you hate subscription models, you can also purchase a single perpetual license for 149 US dollars. In this tutorial, I want to show you how easy it is to use optics within Photoshop to take a photo, like this image I took in New Zealand, from here to there. But now, before I talk your face off, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to Adobe Photoshop. Now, let's use Boris FX Optics to spice up this photo here that I took when we were visiting the Milford Sound in New Zealand. First off, because I want to apply optics in a non-destructive way, I'm going to come up into Filter and select Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK. That is going to convert my layer into a smart object, so the filters will be applied to the object, not the image directly. And then let's come up into Filter, Boris FX, and let's launch Optics. The interface for optics is nice and simple. In the middle, you'll find a big preview window where you can see all of the changes that you're making to your image, some viewing controls at the top for image comparison, resolution control, taking snapshots, applying masking, and enabling or disabling that image histogram down in the bottom right-hand corner. Over on the left-hand side, you will find your effects stack, and this is where you can layer all sorts of effects on top of each other, apply masks, and blend them all together to create the final look and really take your photo to the next level. Right now, our stack is pretty empty. It just contains the original image, as well as a single layer that right now doesn't have any effects applied to it. You will find all of the effects and all of the presets that are included in optics down in the bottom here. And there's tons of effects for simulating film stocks, applying grading or tints, lens distortion, lighting effects, so edge rays, glinting, beams, lens flares. You can also render skies or moons or stars and add them to your image. You can stylize everything. And then there's some tabs for any custom presets that you've created, as well as your favorites. Over on the left-hand side, you will find a convenient search function as well, if you already know what you're looking for. And as you click your way through these filters, over on the right-hand side, in the presets tab, you will find thousands and thousands of different presets that you can click your way through to find something that really hits the spot and is exactly what you're looking for. And there's some really, really nice presets in here. Now, once you've selected a preset, that will get applied to your current effects layer at the top of the stack. So right now, this one has changed to film stocks and it's applied this particular preset. If you don't like what this preset looks like, you can then come over into the parameters tab next to the presets and tweak all sorts of parameters for that particular preset. And all of these presets have different types of parameters that you can tweak to your liking and customize this in any way that you want. Now, let me remove the current effect and let's go through an actual example of taking this photo of the Milford Sound in New Zealand to something a little bit more impressive. First off, I just want the image to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to come into the color filters and select auto adjust. And again, in here, there's a couple of presets I can select from. I kind of like auto levels. So that's what the effect looks like. And every layer in the effect stack also has the ability to control the intensity of it. So you can fade it in or out depending on how much of this effect you want to apply. But you can also control the blend mode itself. So you can actually blend layers together in different ways to create all sorts of trippy effects. But I'm actually quite happy with the default settings for this preset, so I'm just going to leave it. 
Next, I think I want to warm this whole image up a little bit. Let's jump into the Film Lab tab and before I select the next filter, I want to create a new layer because I don't want to modify the one at the top of the stack. So let's add a new layer and now I can select a new filter. I'm going to select Looks. That's going to apply this Looks effect on the top of our stack and let's just find a new preset. And some of these ones look really impressive, but they are a little bit full on. I just want something that warms it up a little bit. So maybe I'm going to go with this bleach warm effect here, but it is a little bit too full on. So in the effect stack, let's come into the opacity slider and let's just bring this down a little bit to maybe around 70 or so percent. And that looks pretty nice, but I don't really want to warm up all of these clouds either. I kind of want to retain some of that cool blue here and not have these clouds go all pink. And for that, Optics allows you to apply masks to your layers. In order to do that, at the top of the layer stack, you'll find a button to say add a mask. And there's a bunch of different masks that you can apply to control where exactly these layers are applied. For now, I'm just going to select Paint. That is going to add a new mask onto this layer. And you can see right now, well, nothing has this effect applied because my mask is entirely black. And at the top, I'll now have some options for my pen tool. I'm just going to make this a little bigger, maybe almost like a thousand or so. Yep, make sure the brush is nice and soft and maybe I'll lower the opacity to somewhere around 60. And now I can simply click and drag to essentially paint the opacity of this layer so I can paint this effect on. You can right click and drag to erase the areas of the mask where you've kind of over painted something. And so you're now essentially painting on the opacity, you're painting on where this effect is going to be applied. If you now view the mask, everything that's bright is where the effect is being applied and everything that's dark is where this effect won't be visible. And let's add a big lens flare like the sun coming up behind this mountain onto this image. For that, let's first add a new layer because I don't want to overwrite my looks. Then down in the filters, let's come into the light tab. And over on the right hand side, you will find the S lens flare filter. And this is the lens flare from the Sapphire Effects collection. And this effect is actually used in a lot of Hollywood movies, feature films and TV shows. And it looks really amazing. I really like this effect. And it again contains tons and tons of different presets that you can then click your way through. Let's just find one that you know doesn't look too overbearing. Maybe I'm going to go with this 30 millimeter Tokina preset. Let's drag the flare over to the right hand side. Just the sun's just coming up over the mountain right there. And let's adjust the angle. And that actually looks pretty cool. So that's without the lens flare. And that is with the lens flare. Now I'm finding this lens flare a little bit too bright. So let's come into the parameters and I won't go through these in details. All I want to do is kind of shift the hue over to the right a little bit, but just a tad. And then I'm just going to lower the brightness a little bit. I just want it to be just a little bit less intense. And I think that actually looks pretty cool. Now we can just keep going, but I think you get the idea. The last thing I want to add though, let's just add yet another layer is another effect that I really love. And that is the light leaks effect. Again, you'll find that in the light tab in the filters over on the right hand side is S light leak again from the Sapphire collection. Let's apply this one. And there's lots of really nice presets. Let's just pick one that we like, like Santa Anita looks really nice. Let's zoom out a little bit and you can move these light leak points around and again create all sorts of different effects on where the light is coming from. Let's just tweak this a little bit. Let's zoom in and the effect is a little bit too strong. So you can either come into the parameters and bring down, maybe we'll bring down the scale just a little bit, but I'm also going to lower the opacity of this layer to maybe around 60 or 50. I want it to be just subtly add a little bit of color, a little bit of magicalness to this image. However, I don't like that it blows out the sky over here. And again, let's just apply a simple mask to this layer. So let's come into add mask. I'm just going to use a simple spot mask in this case. Now, by default, the spot mask will define where the effect is applied rather than where it is not. But I can simply invert the mask and you can see it up here. Now the mask defines where the effect does not get applied. I'm just going to move that to where the sun comes over the mountain because that's kind of the area I wanted to protect a little bit from the light leaks. Now I might also lower the opacity of this layer to maybe around 30 or so. I want it to still be fairly subtle. I don't want to go totally overboard. And this is actually quite a transformation of the original image. And yes, I know you might think that this is totally overkill or it's really just not your style, but I hope you get the idea of how easy it is to browse through all of the different filters and the thousands of presets that I included in optics, apply them, tweak them and work with them to really get the image to look exactly the way that you want to. I really enjoy using optics and I'm really excited to have access to all of these filters directly inside of Photoshop to take my photos from not bad to something that I would say is next level. And that's all there is to it. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.